your database model is not good enough. That's what my professor from university in 2010 would say when he sees the design that I'm about to show you. But I want to make a case about pragmatism. My name is Till Carlos and I'm building products with my team and we document our journey here. And today we're going to talk about a simple question that anyone can ask in order to get a clear idea of a database design. Before I'm going to go into this question, I quickly want to show you our final thing that we're working with and also want to explain to you why I'm choosing this notation. So real quick. What we have here is just a simple, like we are, we're dealing with boxes and arrows. And this helps me to think about something in a simple way. We don't need to have like an ERM model or something that's like being taught in university because I expect that anyone who builds stuff with relational databases at least has an idea of what's going on here. And we can break things down to the simplest thing, which is the belongs to relation. If you go here to Excalidraw. I use this because it's simple. I just need boxes and arrows and we can just see how things fit together because from this arrow we can make everything else. Right now we have company belongs to a user. This might look weird. You might want to do it the other way around but this is our MVP and we just have the constraint that a company has one user and one user can manage multiple companies. That's just the way it is here and if we would now reverse this we would say user has many companies so uh, we have the reverse relation is just uh, visible just through the same arrow and if we wanted to have a has and belongs to many relation um, we could do the following let's say this for example would work but i don't like it so much i would much rather just really put the box in the middle So this would be my notation for a has and belongs to many relation. And we're still only dealing with simple arrows. And if we ever want to extend this, we can just make the box bigger and it's always going to be a database table, but then we can add some, some more things, like for example, the role here. And so we, we just stay with a simple error. Okay, let's get into that. The thing we're building here is a partnership project. And if you have a project that you want to take there where you need a technical partner on, you can send me an email and maybe we can get into a business together. For this use case, I anonymize the app a bit. So what we're dealing with here is an SKU ordering app. So this is an app just to have stock keeping units or so basically products and to order them from wholesalers. Very simple app. And we wanted to make sure that the MVP is being able to get shipped very fast, but still we wanted to have some kind of data model. We don't want to go fully with like a object, like a document model database. We wanted to have something that's a bit more stable for the future for us to have a full blown SaaS at one point. Before we go into the database model, I want to give a bit of context. We are building here an app where companies can order SKUs, those are stock keeping units, basically product. They can order them from certain wholesalers and they do this with, with agents. So I wanna quickly show you the database model as I designed it in a first sketch. So first we have the company, that's like the, the company paying our software in order to get access for the system. The users work on the company. So we have the, the logins here for the users. And I explained before that one user can have multiple companies. And then the agent is the, the thing, basically the, the job that then continues to hit the API and order something from the wholesaler. Now, what we need to connect the wholesaler to the company is that we have a wholesaler login. And this needs to get done um, in a way that someone puts in the credentials and then hits a test connection button that hits the API and sees if the response is correct. And then when they make the agent, they want to select which wholesalers to work through. So we thought we have this end to end table agent wholesale lock. So this is a, a has and belongs to many or an end to end relation here. And the agent works on one product, which is cool. Um, this is exactly what we want. And now basically this is where we stand. And what I did next was to put an order object in here, the order table. So once once a request is made and we're able to see that an item is available, an SKU is available. So the agent runs the job for his product and asks this, those different wholesalers. And then the agent will say, okay, let's get this, get this API request sent out. Once it comes back and says, we're good, we can order this thing, then it creates an order, uh, an order object, an entry in the order table. Okay, so this is what we did. And I discussed this yesterday with our two junior developers who I'm working with on this project. And now this is where we start. And I, I looked at this overnight and I thought something is just a bit off. And I then found a way to ask myself a question over and over again to get this simple, simplified. The question is this, what are the main queries my app will perform? That is the one question where 
that led me to simplify this a bit. So let's look at the following. Let's say the someone goes into the app and wants to see if a certain order was made and sees the order. Let's say we go into the order show page. What do we want to do from the order show page? We want to go in and have a look at, okay, how many things do we, do we order? When did we order? And what product did we order? And if we now look into what product did we order, we now have to go a certain path. And if you have coded a bit, you should kind of have an idea how to find that out. So the order belongs to an API request. API request belongs to agent wholesale login. That agent wholesale login belongs to an agent and the agent belongs to a product. So in order to do this, I'm going to write down the query right now. And this is Ruby on Rails, but I think if I think you should be able to code this in any language in almost the same way. Okay, let's put this down here. And I'm using my blog just to code it out. I don't want to go into the code directly because we can focus on it here. So we have the order. Let's say order, we're getting the order 42. And now we want to get the product from the order. So we say order. And now we go through API request, agent wholesale login, agent product. This would be the query. I don't want to talk about efficiency right now, but just for reference, let's ask ChatGPT what this would look like in SQL. Here we go. This is the whole query in SQL and it's totally cool. Like, I don't think we have any kind of speed requirements here because we're still dealing with an MVP, but it's still a bit complicated. And also what we need to know, if any of these objects get deleted, the order, we will have no idea what SKU the, 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 or, the order has as a, as a product. So what kind of product this order belongs to. And this is very important for us to know. So the first thing I do is I add another relation here. I add the relation to the agent because now we can see this order was, was done by the agent and then the agent knows exactly the product. This implies that the agent always has a product super important so we need to have a not, not null constraint here and also we can never change that relation so we need to have on on the application level we need to exclude the agent to change the product after it was instantiated so this needs to be we need to we need to make sure that there's a check basically a consistency check in this construct okay now we have two here the other thing that i want to look at is this thing here agent wholesale logins it is technically totally fine. The agent has a wholesaler login and the wholesale, so those are configured. So basically on the agent, you can, you can select, I want this wholesaler and this wholesaler and this wholesaler, and then the agent queries those different wholesalers. And it's also, it also makes sense that we cannot make this relation here because, so if we would make this here, it wouldn't work because we can only use the wholesalers that we actually have configured. So if we would do this, then we would always need to query what are the wholesalers that actually work? So it would probably be better to do this. But I was I noticed is what are the queries you want to do? So if we have a wholesaler login, that means the company or some employee of the company logged in and configured the wholesaler and basically has this connection, like the connection object in a list somewhere. Like he has a confirmed login for this wholesaler. As an admin or as someone who, who, who debugs this tool later, I would like to know how many API requests were made against that specific wholesale login. And I don't want to go over this relation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up to the wholesale login. So now basically we have, it's a bit double here, right? We have, it looks almost like this, this is in this, this goes the same, the same way, but, but in two different paths, but this is fine because we want to query from the API request. We want to know what's the wholesale login. And from there we get the wholesaler. Another important thing is that this is immutable. So we can, we cannot change the wholesaler. We cannot change the company. So once this is set, we try to log in. If it's logged, if it, it's getting logged in, then, then it's getting basically getting written immutable. That means we should not be able to, to change anything here. We can archive it later. This is a different problem. If we ever want to decide to not use a wholesale login anymore, we need to set a deactivated flag. We cannot delete it because we have the API request bound to this. When we are asking this main question, what are the main queries the app will perform? What's probably very likely to happen is that the user logs into his company and they're getting a list of agents. 
And for every agent, they want to see the product. So this is a quick relation. This is important. And then also from the agent, what are the orders that they would have? And finding the orders would also be a very quick thing. Or all orders in general would say, company, find me all the agents and then joins the orders into that. So those pathways here run pretty fast and those here as well. And from the order, we also know the API request. Another, more, another important thing is this. Now there's one thing which I'm not quite sure yet, and this is about up to discussion and we are building this kind of in the next day. So something I will explore in the next days and it's really dependent on if we need this. Do we need to, to show all the API requests of a certain agent? If we want this, we should make another relation here. And then we would be a bit in a dilemma where we say, okay, well, this kind of is the same like this here. Maybe should, we should bring them together. But there's one benefit of our, of our whole structure here. It's, it's, it's all basically, a ne you would, we would never change anything. We only add stuff to the models. We, we only add data to the current database. We never change data. So you want to have a normalized database usually in order to be able to change something at one point and then changes for all, everything else. But here, this is more like a log. So the agent gets created once and then it gets, uh, once it's done, it gets archived. And then the agent accumulates data. So as we accumulate data and we add those relations here, it wouldn't be that bad in comparison to like another database model where you constantly need to change data in a living construct. However, on this point, I'm not exactly sure, but for an MVP, it's fine. So in doubt, I would take it away and see if I can run my MVP with this. Because the main question is, what are the main queries this app will perform? And the main query right now is not to filter all the API requests for every agent. For the agent, we just want to see what got ordered. And then the agent needs to execute the queries in, in relation to a wholesale login that gets set up before. So that's good for now for the MVP. And my main mission is not to overthink it, to get this out of the door fast, to go live and test this out with some real users and then we can see what the, the feedback is and then we're going to modify. If you want to see how we build this app, just subscribe to my channel and see you in the next videos.